you can look at the Didache teaching text used widely by the church. The writer quotes from Matthew on the Lord's Prayer. That puts them, the Gospel to 95 AD. Uh, Matthew's quoted in 1 Clement 13, 1, 2. All this evidence shows that the Gospels are first century documents. They are written when the life witnesses were around. Scholars that believe that the Gospels are from an early date are John W. Wainham, Professor of New Testament Greek, Berg Gerdesen, Swedish scholar, Professor at Lund University, Marcel Jaus, a French biblical scholar, Karsten Peter Thied, German papyriologist. You want to look at the more popular level, look at the early eyewitnesses of Jesus by J. Warner Wallace. Ignatius' letter to Trillian uh, in 9.4 we read Jesus Christ was of the stock of David, he was from Mary, he was truly born, ate, drank, was truly persecuted under Pontius Pilate, was truly crucified and died, who also was truly raised from the dead, his father raising him. What does this, that, that's www.earlywritings.com, Ignatius. What, what does this evidence prove about the Gospels and the early church fathers here. Well, first of all, it proves that the Gospels are first century documents. Secondly, it proves that these Gospels were authoritative. And thirdly, it proves that these Gospels had a general historical narrative that is consistent across the board uh, and, and can be compared to other data which confirms that this is highly unlikely uh, it was an invention. If this story of the death and resurrection of Christ is consistent for a variety of documents in the second century and in the first century, it gives you a clear indication that those events took place. Secondly, the nature of the Gospels the the gospels text are historical historically reliable now here is an important debate that i had with some atheists such as thunderfoot and ozzy and all the rest of them and the kind of laughable arguments that they would use where thunderfoot would say that comics can have historical facts in them, but it doesn't mean that Spider-Man rose from the dead or whatever. Well, first of all, the Gospels are a particular genre of literature. Comics are a particular genre of literature. Comics are comics. Everybody knows what a comic is. The Gospels are a particular genre of literature. So right off the bat, people like Thunderfoot and Ozzy need to reconsider their silly arguments. For as much as many have taken in hand to set forth in order a declaration of those things which are most surely believed among us, even as they delivered them, beginning were eyewitnesses and ministers of the word, it seemed good to me also, having had perfect understanding of all things, from the very first to write unto thee in order most excellent Theophilus. Luke is basically saying, look, I'm writing a document of history here based on eyewitness material. That's the genre of the literature. So when skeptics kind of come and say, oh, well, you're going to present facts to prove that the Gospels are historically reliable. But that doesn't prove Jesus rose from the dead. What it proves is the underlying textual base of the Gospels is reliable. And it shows that the right and had integrity and it gives strength to their testimony that Jesus rose from the dead 
So it actually is a very important plank of the debate and argument and cannot be dismissed as easily as Ozzy and Thunderfoot did uh, prior to Christmas. So there are many historical facts. There are countless facts in the Gospels that have been confirmed. I could go on and on and on. Uh, the pool, the uh, in John chapter one forty four uh, in Bethesda, there is talk about fishing in that area, uh, fishing implements in a house in Bethesda. Now you might. Say so, well, why is that important? It's showing that the Gospels are historically accurate when they talk about the culture. Minor details that are mentioned in the Gospels, if they're confirmed in history, shows you that there's an intricacy there that you cannot get by fiction. In John chapter 2, verse 1 and 11, they found uh, storage uh, storage where uh, storage pots just like you see in the story uh, in Canaan in John chapter 2 verse 1 and 11 Pool of Bethesda John describes it as near um, near the sheep gate the discovery of the pool shows beyond doubt John was right Tiberius John is the John identified the Sea of Galilee as the Sea of Tiberius getting the exact kind of language of that time in John 6 1 John 21 1 he got Herod Antipas, Tetrarch of Galilee and Perea in 4 BC AD 39, moved his house, as it were, his capital from Sephorus to Tiberius in AD 24. So John gets the political times right very clearly. The Gospels talk about Pontius Pilate, we find an inscription about that. We the Gospels talk about Jesus going to the temple to discuss we find the very stairways where people taught and sat at the temple to discuss. We found a Galilean boat in Luke 5, 1 to 11, uh, archaeologically. And we even found maybe Peter's house in Mark 9, 1. Ron Wallard writes, almost all scholars now espouse this view. So I could go on and on and on. Uh, if you if you read Craig Blomberg's um, book on um, the atrocity of the Gospels, um, you will find time after time after time the Gospels get it right historically. I've tried. I've gone into depth on the Quirinius census. Uh, by the way, if you want to look at that, if you look at my videos on Jesus, uh, uh, Cambridge Companion to Jesus. But the point is that um, there's countless facts verified in the Gospels, historical facts, and minor details that people who are making things up wouldn't get correct. And there has to be an acknowledgement that there is historical accuracy within the Gospels. Now, there has been an unbalance, an, in, an injustice and an imbalance concerning the Gospels. Since Paul, a lot of biblical scholarship and historical Jesus studies was influenced by post-Enlightenment thinking and was anti-church. 
and so believed that it should get behind the Gospels and get to the true source material. And it was to ignore the church's perspective on the Gospels. But what that did is it began to take apart intricately analyzing every bit and part of the Gospels, never accepting any of it as historically accurate. Now, because of the 1920s, when uh, Jew, Jewish scholars wrote the lives of Jesus from a Jewish perspective, and that scholarship was discovered in the 1950s and 60s, it began to dawn on scholars that Rudolf Bultmann and the form critics were actually not correct in their assessment of the Gospels. Bultmann assessed that the Gospels were actually, uh, that the, he, he believed in Greek culture and that anything that was Jewish was not historically accurate. But because of the revival of Jewish scholarship in the 50s and 60s, scholars realized Bultmann and the form critics were wrong, that there was actually a Jewish context to the Gospels. What that did then, it made scholars realize there was actually more historical content within the Gospels than was given credence. My argument and, and contention against atheists and skeptics who would say that we look at the Gospels piecemeal, that is the historical method, and that we look at every individual bit and assess it on its merits, is not completely fair because we wouldn't do that with 